Hello and welcome. My name is Meepless, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at Nimona by Noelle Stevenson, originally completed as a webcomic slash Stevenson's senior thesis at the Maryland Institute College of Art. It began in June of 2012 and was published as a graphic novel by HarperCollins in 2015, which is why it's going into the mainstream bucket rather than the indie one, although my scheduling is all off. Arrgh! I originally wanted to revisit the title, not only because it was very fun, but also because it was set to be adapted by Disney. Sadly, that adaption was canceled with the closing of Blue Sky Studios, although reports on Wikipedia seem to indicate the largely completed film is being shopped around to other studios. So there remains hope. Despite being someone who has counted themselves an appreciator of Stevenson's work for quite some time, this will be my first review of his work since the great channel resets. So let's dive into a bit of a bio. After kicking off Nimona, Stevenson collaborated on Lumberjanes, which started in 2014, and is definitely also on my TBR list for a future A to Z of queer lit comic video. He then went on to be the creator, showrunner, and executive producer of the recreation of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power for Netflix. They also published a memoir just this past year, as well as a short comic on Gumroad about their experience with gender especially when it came to his chest you can get it for free and up so i'll leave a link in the description content notes for fantasy violence and betrayal one of the more standard action adventure comics i've read in some time the violence seemed pretty average for something that isn't going for a particularly violent and or gruesome look Unlike many action adventure titles, there is some discussion about how either Nimona or Blackheart thinks that the other should be killing more or fewer people. What kind of keywords did this graphic novel bring to mind? Good versus evil, knights, shapeshifting, haircuts, fantasy science, subversion, balance, loyalty, corruption, pollution, arch nemesis, tropes, and queer coding. Recapping the Goodreads synopsis, quote, Nimona is an impulsive young shapeshifter with a knack for villainy. Lord Ballastar Blackheart is a villain with a vendetta. As sidekick and supervillain, Nimona and Lord Blackheart are about to wreak some serious havoc. Their mission proved to the kingdom that Sir Ambrosius Goldenloin and his buddies at the Institute of Law Enforcement and Heroics aren't the heroes everyone thinks they are. But as small acts of mischief escalate into a vicious battle, Lord Blackheart realizes that Nimona's powers are as murky and mysterious as her past, and her unpredictable wild side might be more dangerous than he is willing to admit. It. A story that feels both familiar and subversive. It's certainly more queer than some initially gave it credit for, but more on that later. Stevenson does a pretty good job of presenting us with the bones of a story that feels familiar, but taking it into fresh character development and plot directions. A fairly speedy read, the number of words per frame is fairly low, but there are generally words in each frame. And despite being a webcomic, Stevenson appears to have had a pretty clear idea where the story was going every step of the way. The art style is very obviously something that Stevenson has become known for. I found it fairly expressive and a good use of middling to low levels of detail. Looking at gender and sexuality representation, there's a lot going on just below the surface. The haircuts were also very on point. The story also reminds me a bit of some very good fanfiction queering up traditional fantasy. Not exactly the same thing as class. One of the other standout parts of Nimona is that as we progress through the story, the idea of who the good guys are and who the bad guys are becomes very complicated, which I always appreciate, partially because Nimona clearly articulates an anti-corporation ethic. Obviously, I'm biased because I generally agree with it, but the existence of lots of shades of gray alongside clear moral boundaries was just a delight. And while race wasn't really explored, at least as far as I could tell, in Nimona, Stevenson clearly chooses to set their story in a multiracial city, which is more than many vaguely medieval fantasy stories choose to do. Ability versus disability gets a nod through some amputee slash prosthetic arm representation that appears to my alibi untrained senses to be fairly respectful, but take that with a huge grain of salt. Uh, to conclude, after my last reading and rating this book, four out of five stars, and I feel like I'll just kick it up a star to around five out of five stars. It's aged really well. Bye all, keep reading, and resist white supremacy. 
And as always, literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.